Welcome to health class. This lesson is just in giving students the opportunity to learn some of the health class rules and procedures. So this is day two. In day two of this class, we get our workbook. So if you are missing day two or you are a new student, make sure that you get a workbook from your teacher as soon as possible. Now let's just kind of start with some classroom rules and procedures with, of course, what you will need for class. So our class materials. The first thing you're going to need to bring this class every day is your health workbook. If you do not bring your workbook, you will need to take notes on regular paper. Please contact your teacher immediately if you lose your workbook. Do not keep your workbook in your locker. If you get a school locker, uh, this will become an issue as you will more than likely forget it and you need it. So it is recommended that you keep your workbook in your backpack at all times. This way you have it every day and you also have it if you are home needing to do homework. So again, by keeping your workbook in your backpack, you will always have it available in class or if you are absent and need to complete the lesson from home, yay. You will also need to bring something to write with every day. Pens or mechanical pencils are preferred. Flare pens, gel pens, or colored pencils are also highly recommended for coloring in your workbook and entertain yourself when the class might get a little boring. There is no pencil sharpener in class, so if you would like to, of course, bring your own little pencil sharpener, you may do so. But again, I highly recommend pens or mechanical pencils. As far as electronic usage goes, this will always require permission. The use of phones, computers, headphones, and earbuds is not allowed unless permission is given. These devices need to be put away unless given permission. There's a theme here. The electronic devices used without permission are kept until the end of class or taken to the office. This is the no school policy. So yes, you need to bring your Chromebooks every day, but we will not be using them every day. So unless you are asked to get it out, go ahead and leave that put away. And then of course, keep your phone put away during class time. It is, um, at times, you will need to use headphones or earbuds to access and listen to online material. We will have a classroom set, but if you'd like your own, you may do so. So it is highly recommended you bring your own headphones or earbuds and keep them in your backpack. Just a simple, cheap, a uh, couple dollars at the dollar store or whatever pair will work just fine. Entering the classroom. So this is at the beginning of class. Please enter the classroom respectfully. Grab a starter as you walk in. Those will be located by the door on the table. Calmly sit in your assigned seat and patiently wait to begin the starter as soon as the bell rings. The seating chart is located on the back wall of the classroom if you forget where you sit. You do not get to choose your own seats in this class. Attendance is taken as soon as class begins. Students not in their seat will be marked tardy. Students who do not enter the classroom respectfully and on time, we'll be asked to do additional work to relearn the importance of following class rules and procedures. Let's take a look now at how we take notes in this class. Uh, we simply write down anything that is underlined uh, in the presentation. So basically, as a student, you are expected to follow along with the lesson and write down anything that is underlined into your health workbook. If you are missing items from your workbook, you can find the information from a helper packet located under the shelves in class or on Canvas. Helper packets, here's a look at where they are, right over there on the countertops under the shelf. You can see the arrow pointing down at it. That's where they are. So make sure you return the helper packet before the end of class if you do borrow one. Let's talk now about the daily starters. Basically every single day, we will start the starter when class starts. So after the bell rings, the starter will appear. And there are three types of starters that we do in this class. We have practice starters, mastery starter, and quizzes. Let's start by explaining kind of what the practice starters are. Um, first things we do with the practice starter and any starter is make sure you put your name on your work. Any no-name papers are thrown away and you'll need to complete it again. Practice starters are worth five points. 
and go towards 25% of your overall grade. Therefore, they go under practice points. Practice starters are simple and are used to review previously learned material or introduce students to a new concept. Now, mastery starters, although similar, similar to practice starters, are worth 10 points and go towards 75% of your overall grade because these are actually a test question. We write these essays and by doing these uh, test questions as starters, this allows you to not be frustrated by long essay questions on the end of unit tests. We'll talk more about the end of unit tests coming up here in just a bit. The good news is, although this might be a little hard, you may, of course, use your notes on mastery starters, which gives you a very good incentive to take good notes. And finally, quiz starters basically are worth 20 points and go towards 25% of your overall grade. They're more of a review than a quiz. These quizzes are designed to review the material and give you a preview of questions that will be on the end of unit test. You may also use your notes on quizzes. I would rather you look up the answer, learn the answer, than just guess. So again, a quiz is not a test, but they do, so they go on our grade as practice points. Uh, just an FYI, in case you didn't get the get the message from some of the slides previous, you may use your health workbooks to help you with any type of starter, whether it's practice, mastery, or quizzes. Your workbook is available to be used. All starters are turned into the class basket at the end of class, and they are dropped off as we leave row by row. If you finish early, please remain quiet while other students finish their starter. As for testing goes, in this class, we take six unit tests. At the end of each unit, we will have a test, and tests are worth 50 points and go towards 75% of your overall grade. Test questions consist of matching true-false and multiple-choice questions, which are pretty much identical to the quizzes that we have already taken. Study games and practice tests are provided on Canvas to help students prepare before each unit test. You may retake all you may retake all work if you are not satisfied with the score that you received. This includes starters and test scores. But you are not allowed to use your notes on the end. Missing work. Missing work. And all lessons are on Canvas. If you miss class, you will need to complete the starter and online lesson on Canvas. There's an explanation of how to use Canvas on page Roman numeral 11 in your workbook. We will also have an entire day where we go over a lesson together on Canvas. If you don't like doing missing work online, paper copies of missing work can be given upon request. They are located under the shelves on these metal wire shelves. You may also retake any work on Canvas or on paper if you are not happy with the score you see. It is important that you are responsible for your missing work and not your teacher. If you are absent, you need to complete the work on Canvas before you return to class. If you do not complete your absent work at home, you will complete the work in the hall upon your return. You will then also need to complete the current lesson online that you are missing while doing the work you should have done at it. So no homework is ever assigned, but if you are absent, you are missing a lesson and a starter, and those need to be done as soon as possible before you return. Online work is fast and can be completed in 30 minutes or less. Most can be completed in 20 or less. However, it is not as fun as being in class. So please, 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 please complete your absent work at home so you can rejoin class as soon as you return. Now, there are, of course, exceptions to completing missing work immediately. If you're going through some struggles, whether it's funerals or weddings or intense illness, mental health, etc., just send me a message by email or on Canvas that, hey, I'm not going to get this done, and I will gladly extend your time. Just communicate. That's all we got to do. And then at the end of class, we have some procedures. Two minutes before class ends, you will clean up and do the following. There will actually be a little alarm that goes off, and once you hear that alarm, you know it is time to clean up. So then 
You can politely gather and put away all your things, pick up and throw away any trash around your desk. Gently organize your desk on the Velcro strips. This way the rows are nice and straight for the next boss. And then of course, lightly tuck in your chair so uh, your row can leave once we leave. Your chair is untucked, people can't get out. Just again, let's quickly uh, remember that we need to quietly stand by your desk and patiently wait to be excused. Once excused, calmly leave and turning your daily starter in the classes assigned basket. You'll be excused one row at a time. Students who leave early do not clean up their area or turn in their starters early will be asked to do additional work to relearn the importance of following class rules and procedures. So this is kind of where students make a lot of mistakes. They're just excited to leave. So I'm going to quickly review once again, uh, keep it short and sweet, how we end class. Two minutes before the bell rings, we begin to clean up. We put our desk on the Velcro, we tuck in our chairs, and we stand behind our desk and wait patiently. There's no moving around at this time. That can cause problems and chaos. So we will then of course leave row by row. And finally, one of the most difficult things to learn as each class kind of has different policy for this is what to do if you need to use the restroom. We are going to use the restroom and adhere to the school restroom policy located in your planners. Now we are not going to use the planners, rather we're going to use our help workbook. So in the event of an emergency, hold up the back page in your help workbook, wait for acknowledgement, I will give you a head nod, and then quietly get up, grab the hall pass, and go before it is too late. The school policy states that students at Butler Middle School have two hall passes per quarter per class. However, since this class is only held every other day, you are only allocated one pass for this class as the other pass would go to your other class that is um, you have on the opposite day. So uh, no need to panic about this. This little policy is just to keep things order and in order and keep kids from always using the restroom just because they are bored. However, if you are out of bathroom passes in my class and you still need to go, please, please, please uh, just hold up your workbook so I know you're leaving and, and go. We can have the discussion of, you know, the passes and using them correctly, or we can have a discussion about whatever if we need to do so. But we just, we don't want to obviously uh, have an accident while in class because we're out of so there is a little bit of a freedom here to go whenever needed, but we do want to view in class as much as possible. And so this is kind of how that system is working. And then now we're just going to kind of go over the most broken rules and just the importance of not breaking them. And some of them are uh, very simple and some are a little more complica complicated, but we do show kindness, empathy, and gratitude towards others and the school, we are patient and understand that if we do not like someone, we can still be kind and civil. We are thankful for our school and throw away our trash and we do not vandalize damaged school or stick gum and gum wrappers to school property. We keep our hands and feet to ourselves and refrain from touching others. We do not touch others or their personal items. And we respect everyone's privacy and give them as much space as possible in these tiny classrooms. We keep the legs of our chairs and desks on the floor at all times, and we understand that keeping all legs on the floor keeps us from falling and getting hurt. We do not stomp or tap our feet as this creates obnoxious noises that distract classes below and around us. We blow our nose in the hall. We do not ask permission. We simply go into the hall, close the door, blow our nose, throw away our snot rags, sanitize, and return quickly and quietly. We do not bring toys, especially fingerboards, food, candy, or non-water drinks to class. We understand if these items are brought to class, they are thrown or taken away. All toys that are taken must be picked up by a legal guardian or we can get them back to the last day of school. We may have a water bottle in class with water as the only ingredient. 
We did not bring drinks that could stain the floor. We are not asked to get a drink in the hall. The answer will always be no. We do not wander around the room. We stay in our assigned seats unless we need to blow our nose or use the restroom by following the school's restroom policy. Wandering around the room is why there is currently a no pencil sharpener in the class. And finally, we do not talk during the starter or when our teacher is talking. We recognize that excessive talking may cause our teacher to lecture us on the importance of following rules. And guess what? Your teacher doesn't like to lecture. So thank you for following class rules. If you ever have questions or concerns, just let me know. As these are rules, not laws, and they can be adjusted. Thanks. Have a great day.